We are about to enter 2024 and it's never been easier for someone to get into content creation. If you're just starting your journey or even thinking about upgrading, the amount of options and choices when it comes to your beginning camera has never been more confusing. Like what brand do I choose? What's an e-mount? Do I even need a camera? My name is Joe. This is Matsu Excel, and let's help you choose your first camera. Tech has changed rapidly in the past couple years, and it's easy for a newer creator to get lost window shopping. Look, let me guess, you're probably gone through Best Buy, read like 20 reviews, and maybe this is like your ninth video if you watched so far. It's okay to admit it, because when I first got into photography, I was the same way. Picking a brand feels like the first day of high school. There are seniors and juniors who have so much more experience. You're feeling judged based on who you hang out with, what you're wearing, where you sit. Is this gonna be your persona for the rest of your high school career? And Becky, Becky's always bragging about how daddy bought her her Mercedes to drive to school. Maybe that's just me. The point is, yes, it seems scary, but at the end of the day, we all made it out. Life wasn't that scary afterwards. We weren't judged, and, and honestly, no one gave up about Becky. The same goes for brands and your gear. You don't need to worry about it as much as your first choice, because technically you can always change the team later. Okay, great, that's great. How does this help me? Well, for starters, when it comes to your first camera, you should ask yourself, what am I creating? A photographer may have different needs or wants versus someone who's primarily a videographer. Maybe you're a Twitch or a YouTube streamer. You may prefer certain capabilities from someone else who's primarily like vlogging. Maybe you want to use it for both. Maybe you want to use it for all of the above or none of the above. Thinking along these lines gives us a better understanding of just what specs you should prioritize and care about more than another. Things like shutter speed, native ISO capabilities, maximum, you know, megapixels. Those aren't as relative depending on your use case. So let's do this. Let's cut out all the noise and look at some solid contenders for your first camera. When picking your starting camera, it's good to narrow the playing field. These options really should satisfy the majority of our use cases, being photography, videography, and potentially streaming. So each camera being considered, we wanna make sure we have at least 4K capability. Now. Even though most viewers are watching content on mobile devices, having an option to record in 4K just gives you the power not only to be able to crop down and zoom in and still get a good 1080p picture, but you do get higher quality. You actually do get some better light um, capture. And honestly, it looks better for those potential bigger, bigger screen viewers. HDMI output, this is honestly vital for any streamer or videographer, and honestly, some photographers. In-body video recording, has its limits and it doesn't bode well when you're editing versus if you're able to record directly to an external recorder or even connect it to an HDMI capture card. Being able to have those options just opens the door to being able to use your camera in far more capacities. We also wanna make sure we're having options that have the capability for interchangeable lenses. Newer cameras like the Sony ZV-1F came out very cheap and yes, it's an amazing option if you're a vlogger, but the limitation to just one lens really shuts the door at not only being able to get better images and better quality, um, just photos, but it closes that door for any kind of future upgrades. Um, and it's always good when you invest in a camera that you wanna invest in a camera that's gonna have some kind of longevity, whether you're gonna keep it or you're gonna sell it. And then ultimately you spend more money getting better glass over time. So not being able to even consider an option does limit you. And then lastly, we wanna make sure we can connect an external microphone. The option to connect an external mic is very crucial when it comes to videography and even streaming. Now, even though the cameras have really high quality built-in mics nowadays and it's come a long way, they're still nowhere near the quality that you could get with external mics. And honestly, we wanna make sure our budget is still under $1,000 for a kit, camera, and lens. This is your first camera or even your upgrade if you're using your phone to create. It's easy to want to just go out and buy the latest piece of gear, but let's be real, you're starting out and you really shouldn't spend more than a grand on your first body and lens. Plus, you may want to change brands. That's the whole question of here. The more you spend on your gear, the more you acquire, honestly, the harder it's going to be to switch in the long run. 
So usually when starting out, you want to upgrade maybe to like one or two lenses. And fortunately, that doesn't break the bank when you're buying a kit that potentially could come with those two lenses and still stay under $1,000. Let's take a look at our first contender, the Nikon Z30. With the 20 megapixel sensor and X-Speed 6 processor, the Nikon Z30 is a great choice for new creators who loves a camera that's light, portable, captures vibrant colors. Every Nikon video will talk about how Nikon always captures the best colors, and honestly, the Z30 is no exception. Video-wise, it can shoot 4K30, has the HDMI output and the mic input that we need. The biggest advantages to the Z30 are the fact that it's very compact and it has that flip-out rotatable screen. The body itself doesn't have the best stabilization when it's paired with a kit lens, though it actually becomes better. Um, and it's the, probably one of the best vlogging kits. If you're a creator, I do recommend though picking up the 24 millimeter prime lens. I have a video about it right up here if you wanna check that out later. A couple disadvantages of the Nikon that may make you consider less is just the focus system. Um, the Z30 does have a far better, I think more responsive focus system than some of their full frame cameras. But the Nikon lineup itself just always has been feeling lagging when it's compared to competition. The lack of a viewfinder can also have a negative impact and have photographers lean possibly another way. Um, it's, you know, hit or miss. It really depends if you like using it. Lastly is overheating. Nikon claims the camera can shoot up to 124 minutes at 1080p, but when you're recording in 4K, the system tends to overheat and shut down about the 37 minute mark. And this can really come into play when you're recording a video, podcast, or maybe like a longer activity, like a wedding video or something like that. But honestly, as a beginning creator or beginning, beginning videographer, you may never hit that length in just one shot. Um, but for streaming, I did find that you could use 1080p with no limitations. So that's always a positive for it. Next up on our list is the Sony ZV-E10. This thing is packed with the 24 megapixel Bion ZX processor. And honestly, Sony came out swinging in this round. They have a solid go-to camera for vlogging and videography, um, even for photos as well. Now imagine it's essentially the predecessor of the A6100, but it has a full flip out screen, just like the Nikon Z30. And honestly, where Sony shines is their autofocus system um, and its inherent features that actually really satisfy a lot of up and coming beginning cinematographers. The ZV-E10 can shoot 4K30 as well, has a limited record time, HDMI output and mic in. And most users claim that yes, there could be issues with overheating after about 90 minutes at 4K, it does still set it apart from its competition. Also, another big advantage is the option that you can connect headphones. Yes, it does have a headphone out. This allows aspiring filmmakers to monitor your audio when you're directly recording from the camera. And also another positive is just that Sony has really locked down the USB webcam features. So you actually get a higher quality feature through USB than you would against like the Nikon. Now, we do have some problems though, because as with the Nikon, the Sony ZV-E10 also lacks a viewfinder. Though released in 2021, the Sony ZV-E10 lacks a lot of Sony's newer AI capabilities and the operating system is kind of lacking or lackluster. Um, I would say though, even though given some of its disadvantages, honestly, the biggest upside is that Sony is just very video centric. And honestly, it has a huge support for third-party lenses unlike any of its competitors. You know, even though you're getting a budget body like this, you could still pick up a high quality Sony E-mount lens or even a Sigma or Tamron lens for a cheap and still get a huge advantage just with the cost savings of the body alone. Fresh with Canon's Digic 8 processor and a 24 megapixel sensor, the R50 brings probably the most photography centric options to the table, though it still has a lot of the video capabilities as well. Now, the biggest advantage of the R50, it does have a electronic viewfinder. It does have dual pixel AF and like the others, it also has the variable rotating screen and it can shoot video about up to an hour. But the disadvantages though, could be, you know, something to think about. Canon does include a limit of 4K 24 frames per second versus the others that have 4K 30. This may not be the biggest deal breaker, but you know, it's something to consider. Also the lackluster power through USB-C is probably what puts this camera at the biggest disadvantage, especially for a long form shooting. Now, this is the only camera out of the group that does not have continuous power, simultaneous power and charging. So you can remedy it by getting a dummy battery, but you does it does put itself at a disadvantage. 
like its competitors. You could connect it via USB-C to use it as a webcam. But here's the thing, it's not charging. There's no power while you're using it as a webcam. So you're still running off the battery. So if your battery dies, so does your webcam. Like I said though, you could remedy it by buying a dummy battery. It's gonna be an additional purchase though, but there is a workaround. Sony, Canon, and Nikon have and continue to be considered the top three brands in the camera world. And this list, it's not gonna be any different. Each camera has their advantages and disadvantages, but no matter what, there will still be a huge step for creating amazing content for any beginner or any person who's looking to upgrade to their first camera. If you're primarily a photographer who casually may shoot video, Canon has the best option, but Sony is really right on its tails. With a built-in viewfinder and 24 megapixels, Canon does have a slight advantage against the competitors. Now, though Canon currently does not offer a third-party lens option, they still have been pumping out lenses and newer glass that's affordable. So when you combine that with this camera body, it could be a true beast. Now, Sony's AI and autofocus updates have continued to be game changers, and Nikon's still trying to catch up. I mean, I shoot Nikon, but given Canon, and Sony's roadmaps, I'm definitely tempted to see the other side of the fence. If you're primarily a videographer, hands down, Sony is probably the best pathway at this point. I mean, Nikon and Canon are chasing really close, and Nikon was the first to put raw capabilities in their Z6 and Z7, but since then, Sony and Canon have been lapping Nikon. And this past year, Sony has gone hard with throwing video centric capabilities in higher end bodies that it does put video creators in a tough choice because when you look at the future upgrades and pathways, Sony has been laying it down. And honestly, your options are endless. If you're a vlogger, streamer, or even just a casual content creator, I will say Nikon offers some of the best overall options because it just has a mix of photography and video capabilities. And my personal story, when I first started my photography journey, I was, was shooting Canon, I had a Canon T3. Eventually I upgraded to the Nikon D5500, thanks for a cool price mistake. But since then I fell in love with just the colors and the vibrancy that comes out of Nikon cameras. And I've gone on and worked with national brands. I've had run my own business as far as doing portraits, weddings, and even some additional like online content. I started dabbling in streaming. I've been doing video work and the Nikon hasn't let me down. If you watch all of my videos on YouTube, you'll actually see that primarily I've been using my Z30. And though it may seem like I'm biased towards Nikon, I really do feel that it's a jack of all trades. It's just not the master of one or the other, but it's good option, especially for someone who's just getting into it. At the end of the day, no matter your choice, you still have options. And each camera, honestly, in this list is a perfect starter, especially when you combine it with a kit lens. From there, your pathway is set. Now, with all that being said, what are you gonna pick? Are you gonna choose a ZV E10? Maybe you're gonna dabble with the Z30? Or are you just gonna go full out with an R50? Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts and what you decide to go with. If not, leave your favorite emoji. It helps the algorithm and honestly helps other creators like you find content like mine. I'm Joe. This has been Mods of Excel, and as always, much love. I appreciate all of you guys. Good luck on your journeys. It's going to be scary, but we're here for you, and I know you're going to do great things. Peace.